Hello and welcome to the Ojani School Disruptive Innovation Program. Today, we will be exploring computer fundamentals which involve developing an understanding of operating systems and graphical user interfaces, um, identifying successful troubleshooting strategies for common hardware and software issues, and understanding transferable functions between different types of software and differentiating between software uh, types and common use cases. Uh, this lecture will help you understand how computers work and how to use them. Uh, we also talk about how to set up a computer, the difference between hardware and software, and the types of computers you can use. We we'll also explore the basic parts uh, of a computer. So whether you are getting started with your first computer or are just looking to learn more about how they work, you will find all the information you need in this lecture. When you are done, you will have a fundamental understanding of how to use a computer. So how does a computer really work? It's a simple question, but one that everyone ponders from time to time. How does that computer in front of you actually work? Computers have evolved from simple devices to a 21st century uh, staple in just a few decades. But despite being a relatively new technology, most people have no idea how a simple rectangle, uh, small enough to fit in your bag, is capable of everything from complex math to playing videos, audios, and running sophisticated software. A computer is an electronic device that manipulates information or data. It has the ability to store, retrieve and process data. You may already know uh, that you can use a computer to type documents, send emails, play games, and even browse the web. You can also use it to edit or create spreadsheets, presentations, and even videos. Composed of hardware and software, computers operate on two levels. They receive data through an input route, either live or through a, uh, a digital storage unit and send out an output. A computer processes the input to produce the desired output. But how does a machine outperform the human brain? Conventional computers don't try to mimic the human brain. Instead, they run commands sequentially uh, with data constantly moving from input and memory to the device's processor. Overall, a computer works in four steps. A computer system works by combining input, uh, storage space, processing, and output. These four are the major components of a computer. Input is the data before processing. Storage is how the computer retains input data. Processing is where input gets transformed into output. And output, you guess right, is the final result of data uh, processing. Before we talk about different types of computers, let's talk about two things all computers have in common. Hardware and software. Hardware is any part of your computer that has a physical structure, such as the keyboard or mouse. It also includes all of the computer's internal parts, which you can see in the image. Software, on the other hand, is any set of instructions that tells the hardware what to do and how to do it. Example of software includes web browsers, games, and word processors. Everything you do on your computer rely on both hardware and software. For example, right now, you may be viewing this lecture in a web browser, which is a software, and using your mouse, a hardware, to click from page to page. As you learn about different types of computers, ask yourself about the differences in the hardware. As you progress through this program, you will see that different types of computers also often use different types of software. When people hear the word computer, they think of a personal computer, such as a desktop or laptop. However, computers come in many shapes and sizes, and they perform many different functions in our daily lives. When you redo, uh, withdraw, uh, beg a pardon, uh, cash from an ATM, for instance, or maybe scan groceries at a store, 
or use a calculator, you are using a type of computers. Desktop computers, um, many people use them uh, at work, home, and school. Desktop computers are designed to be placed on a desk, and they are typically made up of a few different parts, including the computer case, monitor, and the keyboard and mouse. Laptop computers uh, may, might be the uh, second type of computer you might be familiar with and are commonly called a laptop. Laptops are battery-powered uh, computers that are more portable than desktops, allowing you to use them almost anywhere. Tablet computers, or tablets as they are commonly called, are handheld computers that are even more portable than laptops. Instead of a keyboard and mouse, tablets use a touch-sensitive screen uh, for typing and navigation. The iPad is an example of a tablet. A server is a computer that serves up information to other computers on the network. For example, Whenever you use the internet, you are looking at something that's stored on a server. Many businesses also use local file servers to store and share files internally. Many of today's electronics are basically specialized computers, though we don't always think of them that way. Here are a few common examples. Many cell phones can do a lot of things computers can do, including browsing the internet and playing video games. They are often called smartphones. Wearable technology is a general term for a group of devices, including fitness trackers and smart watches that are designed to be worn throughout the day. These devices are often called wearables for short. A game console is a specialized type of computer that is used for playing video games on your TV. And TVs, um, many TVs now include applications or, or apps for short that lets you access various types of online content. For example, you can stream video from the internet directly onto your TV. Personal computers come in two main styles, PC, and Mac. Both are fully functional, but they have a different uh, look and feel, and many people prefer one or the other. This type of computer began with the original IBM PC that was introduced in 1981. Other companies began creating similar computers, which were called IBM PC compatible, often shortened to PC. Today, this is the most common type of personal computer, and it typically includes a Microsoft Windows operating system. The Macintosh computer was introduced in 1984, and it was the first widely sold personal computer with a graphical user interface, or GUI, pronounced as GUI. All Macs are made by one company, Apple and they almost always use the Mac OS X operating system. So it's time to put our knowledge to test. What two things all computers have in common? You guessed right, hardware and software. You remember we mentioned that all computers have these two things in common, these two components in common. So which of the following is not a type of computer? You guessed right, the monitor. The monitor is a physical structure of the, the desktop uh, uh, computer, but it's not a type of computer. The laptop, servers, and tablets are all forms or types of computers. The basic parts of a desktop computer are the um, computer case, monitor, keyboard, mouse, and power cord. 
Each part plays an important role whenever you use a computer. The computer case is a metal um, and plastic box that contains the main component of the computer, including the motherboard, central processing unit, CPU for short, and power supply. The front of the case has an on and off button and one of the uh, uh, optical drives. Computer cases come in different shapes and sizes. A desktop case lies flat on a desk, and the monitor um, usually sits on top of it. A tower case is tall and sits next to the monitor or on the floor. All in one computers come with the internal components built into the monitor, which eliminates the need for a separate case. The monitor works with a video card uh, located inside the computer case to display images and text on the screen. Most monitors have control uh, buttons that allow you to change your monitor's display settings, and some monitors also have built-in speakers. Newer monitors usually have LCD or liquid crystal display or LED, uh, often called uh, light-emitting diode displays. These can be uh, made very thin or, and they are often called flat panels. Older monitors use CRT or cathode ray tube displays. CRT monitors are much la larger and heavier, and they take up more deck space. The keyboard is one of the main ways to communicate with a computer. There are many different types of keyboards, but most are very similar and allow you to accomplish the same basic tasks. The escape key allows you to stop a function or action. For example, if a web page is taking a long time to load, you can press the escape key to stop loading it. The function keys are labeled, uh, I beg your pardon, labeled F1 through F12. Some programs use these keys as shortcuts for common tasks. For example, in many programs, F1 opens the help file. The print screen, screen lock, and pause or break keys are at the top right um, corner of the keyboard. The print screen keys takes a picture of your screen called a screenshot that you can edit or save using a graphics program. Screen lock and pause break are rarely used today, so many keyboards don't have it. The tab key is used to create indent in word processing programs. Also, if you are uh, filling out a form online, you can use the tab key to switch to the next field. The control, CTRL, alternate, ALT, and shift keys are designed to work in combination with other keys. Typically, you, you hold down uh, the CTRL, alternate, or shift, and then type another key to perform a specific task. For example, in many programs, typing control plus S will save a file. The main part of the keyboard includes the alphanumeric keys, letters and numbers, and the spacebar. The backspace key, also known as the delete key, erases the character to the left of the cursor. The enter key, also known as the return key, Execute commands. For example, while on the internet, you can type a website address and then press enter to go to the website. It is also used to start a new line in word processing programs. Insert uh, switches between insert mode, which inserts new text without deleting anything, and over type mode, which deletes text after the cursor as you type. The delete erases the character to the right of the cursor. The home and end tabs or keys move the cursor to the beginning or end of the current line. Page up and page down screen.
scroll a document or web page up or down. The arrow keys are used for many different purposes, including moving uh, the cursor, scrolling the document, and controlling a game. And the numeric keypad res resembles a calculator keypad. Many users find that uh, it is easier to type numbers using this keypad. On some keyboard, these keypads double as arrow keys. So, time to put our knowledge to, um, to test again. So, what key allows you to quit a tax or program? You guessed right the escape key so we remember we mentioned that the escape key allows you to stop a function or action okay so uh we, we gave an example um, um if you are browsing uh, a web page and it's taking too long to load you can press the escape key to to stop uh, loading it great so what key is used to create indent Correct. So remember, we mentioned uh, that the tab key is used to create indent in word processing programs. So also, if you are filling uh, a form, we mentioned uh, if you are filling the form online, you can use the tab key to switch to the next field. What key moves the cursor up, down, left, or right? You guess right. Remember, the arrow keys are used for many different purposes, including moving the cursor, scrolling the documents, and controlling a game. We uh, I mentioned earlier in the course. So, what makes a space between words or letters? Yeah, you guess right. The space bar. What allows you to type information into the computer? Yeah, the numeric uh, pad allows you to type, um, you know, um, uh, it, it actually resembles a, a calculator pad I mentioned earlier. So uh, it, it, it allows you to, to type information um, uh into the the computer okay mouse is another important tool for communicating with uh, computers commonly known as a pointing device it lets you point to objects uh, on the screen click on them and uh, even move them a mouse is a handheld device that lets you uh, point to objects on the screen click them and move them so take a look at the um, at the diagram to your left uh, to learn um, the, the 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 different types of uh, um, typical mouse. There are two main types of uh, mouse: the optical and the mechanical. So the optical uses an electronic eye to detect movement and is easier to clean. Uh, the mechanical uses a rolling ball to detect movement and requires regular cleaning to work properly. So there are uh, other devices that can do the same thing as a mouse. Many people find them easier to use and they also require less deck space than a traditional mouse. The most common mouse alternatives are uh, the trackball, which has a ball that can rotate freely. Instead of moving the device like a mouse, you can roll the ball with your thumb to move the pointer. The other type is a touchpad, which is also called a trackpad. Uh, it's a touch sensitive pad that lets you control the pointer by making a drawing uh, motion with your finger. 
touchpads are common on laptop computers. There is a proper technique for holding the mouse, allowing you to make use of all the features while also uh, feeling comfortable. Follow the directions and learn how. So place your thumb on the desk or the tabletop on the left side of the mouse. Your index finger or pointer should rest on the left button of the mouse. Place the middle finger on the right button of the mouse. Your ring finger and little finger or pinky should rest on the right side of the mouse. Your palm should cup the end of the mouse gently. Ensure that your palm cup the end of the mouse gently. And the base of your wrist should rest on the mouse pad or the desktop. So these are the uh, proper technique for holding the mouse. So going forward, revise these, uh, adapt them. These are conventions and uh, you will see flawlessly uh, over time, uh, you know, you, you, you will be uh, able to flawlessly uh, navigate your mouse without hurting your wrist. For better or worse, most computer programs depend upon the mouse. The activities uh, uh, below will help you to practice uh, the various tasks you can perform with the mouse. Let's start off with clicking. When you click, you are interacting with the computer, telling it what to do. In order to click, press and release the left mouse button with your index finger. Another technique is called the rollover. In many instances, when you place the cursor over an icon, it will change its appearance. This is called a rollover effect. It might mean that uh, you can interact with the icon, or maybe it's just highlighting where your cursor currently is. Another technique is called double clicking. A double click is when you quickly click the mouse button twice. This can be used to open folders, files, or start programs on your desktop. The last mouse technique is drag and drop. You may sometimes need to drag and drop icons to move them around. This can be used to place files in new folders, delete them, and more. So again, let's put our knowledge to test here. So which of the following is not a computer mouse button? You guessed right. So unlike um, the left button and the scroll wheel, the escape button is actually um, a button on the keyboard. A small moving arrow produced by the mouse when moving on the screen of the monitor is called what? You guessed right, the cursor. Okay, it's, it's a small pointing arrow that, you know, moves around on, on a desktop when, you know, uh, navigating with your mouse. A computer mouse is used to do what? You guessed right. So that's the primary uh, purpose of a computer, to select and open program on a computer, okay? So especially with the double clicking um, uh, technique, okay? So uh, during this lecture, we explored how computer works, okay? And um, uh, how to use them. And we explored some, uh, a bit of hardware and uh, software as the two main components that every computer uh, you know, uh, have or should have. And we also explore the types of computers, including desktop, laptops, tablets, servers, uh, wearables, et cetera, et cetera. And we uh, uh, I, I spoke about some basic parts of a computer, uh, uh, including the keyboard, the mouse, and et cetera, et cetera.
Okay, so these are just the basics of using a computer. In the next lecture, we will talk about how to use um, your computer specific operating systems, uh, applications, and the cloud, uh, including um, a mobile devices and a whole lot more. Okay, so thank you. And uh, this brings us to the end of this lecture. We hope you, you found it uh, useful. And um, as usual, always give us feedback and uh, on, on ways you know, we should improve and uh, serve you better. Thank you very much.